Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another tutorial on my 2D player controller. My name is John, otherwise known as Megahertz, and today I'm going to be showing how I built a wall jump function using Bolt Visual Scripting with Unity. This is the sixth video in the series, so if you'd like to build this player controller from scratch, there's a link in the description to go back to the start. If, however, you just want to know how to implement a wall jump feature in your game, then let's get cracking. By this point in the series, I'm going to assume you have some experience with Bolt Visual Scripting. If not, I would highly recommend going to my channel and picking out an easier project before trying to tackle this one, because with each passing video that I make, I'm going to spend less and less time on the basics and more and more time on advanced features. We're going to need to do some prep work before we're ready to implement the wall jump system. You should know how to build super units at this point. For this build, you will need to go ahead and make several by pausing the video, and when you're done, I'll show you where to implement them. First, we're going to need to build a simple grounded unit, um, followed by a wall collide check, wall slide check, wall sliding macro, a wall jump macro. Make sure that the direction X and the input value on this one has a default value so you can adjust it outside of the macro. And then we're going to need a wall jumping macro and an airborne macro. Okay, we're also going to need to add some player variables. I would add a wall sliding boolean. Uh, also, I would add a wall slide speed. This is going to be a float of a negative one. Uh, we're going to add a wall jump X, float of five, a wall jump Y, float of 12. We're uh, making these variables so that we can adjust them uh, during play mode without having to go in through a macro. Okay, once you get that all done, we're going to need to actually do two more things. First of all, we're going to have to add a wall slide animation to our player, uh, which is going to look something like that. It's just two frames if you have this uh, sprite system. Um, and you're also going to need to add a um, wall sliding bool to your animator. Uh, when you add that animation, it should put it right here in your base layer. Uh, go into regular mode, and I just set it right here, right next to my jump and my fall. Uh, animations this is uh, a super state machine that you have right there and uh, you're going to need transitions from fall to wall slide jump to wall slide um, wall slide to fall and wall slide to jump and just to give you an idea what these transitions need to look like um, the this is the transition right here this is the parameters that you're going to need so wall slide needs to be true and grounded needs to be false you're going to need to go ahead and set these into your uh, transitions under the conditions right here um, all of them should have an exit time of zero with a transition duration and offset of zero listen i know that was a lot to set up but the rest of this will go very quickly um, we're going to go to our player uh, game object. We're going to click on non-combat and the state machine. And then we're going to go right over here where our master uh, uh, flow machine is. And we're going to drop in. Uh, first, we're going to start with our wall sliding uh, macro that we built. Let's go ahead and put that right there. Wall jumping is going to go right uh, here. Uh, let's just move that down just a little bit and off to the side. And then our airborne. Uh, macro that we made is going to go right down here and what we're going to do is we're going to make transitions uh, from the master to the wall sliding from the wall sliding back to the master from wall sliding to wall jumping and wall sliding to uh, airborne and then wall jumping to airborne and then uh, I believe we are also going to make uh, two more transitions, one from master to airborne. Oops, need that actually to toggle start. Uh, make transition from master to airborne, and then uh, one last transition from airborne to master. Okay, we'll get all those transitions set up in just a minute. Uh, just one more thing to do going inside our master flow machine. Uh, we are going to grab our wall slide check. And we are going to put it right here um, and uh, just add it to that chain of checks that we already have. The sprint check, the falling check, and the wall slide check. 
Okay, let me just very quickly explain how each and every one of these transitions need to be set up. It's very, very simple. Um, and, and once we're done with that, I'll go uh, look at each macro and basically try to explain how each one works. So um, from master to wall sliding, you just need a custom event called wall sliding. And uh, from wall sliding back to master, you need wall slide end. Uh, it needs to be, I believe it's case sensitive, it needs to be exactly how it's set up in the macro. So from wall sliding to wall jumping, we have wall jumping. So you just put a custom event there and call it wall jumping. Uh, from wall jumping to airborne, I just call it airborne. Uh, from airborne to wall sliding, call it wall sliding. And from master to airborne, we need airborne. And from airborne back to master, we need airborne in. Just make sure you put them in the right one that the arrow is moving in the right direction and try not to mix them up. But once you get this set up, we should actually have a working player controller with a wall jump and all of the right animations set up as well. So let's go ahead and test it out. Looks like we have a wall jump, very good. Okay, back the other direction. So maybe we can actually get into that middle area now. Um, and oops, kind of a, a tight spot right in there. Okay, so let's get back in here. And so we're in here and now we can just get right back out. Perfect. Okay, so if you're interested, let me just go ahead and try to briefly explain what each one of these macros does and how they work. Um, for our grounded macro that I had you make, it's very simple. We just do a ground check uh, for the player variable grounded just to see if it's true or false. It returns a true or false statement. In wall collide check, pretty much the same thing. The, the variables that we set up on our player, if it is blocked left or right, then it comes back as a wall collision check true. If not, then it comes back false. Um, as far as the wall jump goes, uh, we just, as we're sliding down the wall, we uh, set our uh, wall jump X variable times the direction. So outside of that, let's say we set one right here, you see that the direction, um, it, it, I'll go in and show you exactly where that needs to be set up. But if it's, if it's moving to the right, it needs to be positive one. If it's moving to the left, it needs, it needs to be negative one. And it multiplies that times the wall jump X, which I believe we had set to five. And, um, and then it plugs that into the X value and then the wall jump Y, I believe we had set to 12. So what it's gonna do is launch up 12 and over um, uh, five. So depending on which direction he's facing. So uh, that's just a very simple wall check macro. Let me go back into the player now and we'll actually start getting into some of these more complicated issues and how these are set up. So we have a wall slide check. Whenever the player runs into the wall, there is a constant fixed update going into our wall slide check system. And it's saying uh, for our grounded macro, is it grounded? Okay, if it is grounded, then what it's going to do is it's gonna go straight to our wall collision check. If it's not grounded, then it's going to set the bull of wall slide to off. Now you might be wondering why I do that. Um, when you're sliding down the wall and you hit the ground, it's going through the wall collision check and it's going to show a grounded variable before it turns off that animator. So you need two grounded checks here, one here and one here. And that, that way when you hit the ground, it will return back uh, uh, your wall slide animation is off. So that's why that is there. So uh, as we come into the wall collision check, which I believe we ran into that one. Yeah, so um, if it is uh, showing any kind of wall collision, then it's going to check if it's grounded. If it is colliding against the wall and it is not grounded, then what it's going to do is it is uh, going to set the velocity of the Y. I'm sorry, it's gonna get the velocity of the Y and if that is less than zero, in other words, if the player is moving downwards, then uh, it's going to fire the wall sliding custom trigger event. Uh, and so we'll get into that in just a second and show where that leads. Um, if in the wall collision check, it is not colliding, basically this is just turning everything off. The wall slide uh, animation and the wall sliding variable, it just shuts it off and the player uh, will leave the wall collision. So um, once the wall sliding trigger event happens, 
um, we actually have this uh, animation set up. So wall sliding is going to happen and it goes into this big, complicated, convoluted mess. This is, um, you know, it's not really that hard to understand. I have it all labeled, but basically we have an update going into a wall collision and yet another grounded system. If we ever hit the ground, the reason why this is here is so that it will end the wall slide. We want it to do that. We want it to uh, fire that animator as well back in the original system. Um, so if it comes back as a wall collision, then we move on. If it's false, then we end or if we're grounded. So those two parameters there. If we're not colliding with a wall or if we're not grounded or we are grounded, it ends the wall slide. If while we're wall sliding then and we press down at any point, what it's going to do is it's going to um, end our block right or our block left depending on which direction we're facing because this is the direction it's getting here so which way are we facing on the scale is it positive or negative if uh if it's positive then uh we are going to come and say well i'm i'm not going to be blocked right anymore and what it's going to do is it's going to kick us off the wall with a velocity of a negative one just really quickly let me try to show you that um, in action, whenever you press down, you should see the player kind of bounce off the wall a little bit. I might have to get to a special place to uh, actually fire this. So you notice it kind of kicked him off the wall a little bit. See him fall outwards a little bit. Let's try to do it over here. Oh, push the wrong button. There we go. Did you notice it kind of fell off to the side just a little bit? Um, so this is what this is doing, is pushing off the wall in the direction that's appropriate if the player hits the down button. If the player's not hitting the down button, then basically what this is doing is this is setting our wall slide speed, which I believe we had that set at a negative one. That just really kind of slows it down. You can adjust this uh, where, however you want. So for example, if our player is moving down, um, and I'm gonna do this during play mode so that whatever changes we make, it won't keep it, just to give you an idea. So I'm, uh, I'm at a negative one. Let's say I set that to one. It actually kind of moves upwards. So you just gonna have to play with this. I found that negative one is pretty good. Uh, 0.5 seems a little fast to me. Uh, but let's see, we set that at 0.5. Kind of just kind of like stick to the wall, like almost like Spider-Man. Uh, eight, there you go, 0.8. So he's sticking to the wall. Whatever you want, uh, you can set that there. For the wall jump X, remember we set that uh, parameter in the wall jump. If you did, say, for example, 10 here, it's gonna throw him over 10 whenever he jumps. So um, I just had that set to five. Again, the, the, the Y up, the, the X over. So um, if it's returning that it's not pushing down, then it's gonna go into our wall slide speed on the velocity, so that's what keeps it slow, this little wall slide speed right here. Um, the last thing is when we enter the state, um, it, it starts our wall sliding. It gives you the animator, it, it returns true on your uh, Boolean right there. And if we ever hit jump in this wall slide, then it's gonna throw us into the wall jumping state. So it triggers this little wall jumping uh, custom event. And in wall jumping, this isn't too convoluted, uh, it's not too hard to figure out. So basically what it's doing here is it's checking for block left. And the reason I'm doing that is if he's in the wall jump, he's either block left or he's block right at some point. If he's block left, if it's true, then it's gonna throw our player positively on the X. If it's not true, then it's gonna throw it negative. So there's just a really easy way to check for that. It's going to set the scale. The reason I'm doing that is because whenever he jumps off the wall uh, in a positive way, I want the sprite to be facing a positive direction, right? So we want it to be going this way. If I flip that around, if this was here and this was here, then it would do just the opposite. So see that? I don't want that. I want it the way that we had it here. So that goes here, this goes there. As soon as he's done wall sliding, or excuse me, as soon as he's done wall jumping, it turns the wall sliding to off, wall slide animator, it sets the bool uh, falling to off because we're going up, and uh, it triggers the airborne state. 
The reason why I have an airborne state here, so it triggers this custom event airborne. The reason why I have an airborne state is because I want to take a little bit of control away from the player so they can't just jump, 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 jump up the wall. You don't have to do this. You can set that to whatever number that you like. Um, but basically, I take control. I'm holding the left button down this whole time. I'm taking the control away from the player because I want them to jump outward. Um, just because I want my level design a certain way. Uh, you can set this up to whatever you want. You notice I actually have a dash here. Uh, we will set that up in the next one. So you don't actually even have to have this little thing there. But once it's done with this little delay, again, if you're gonna have a delay that needs to be set to a co-routine, um, once you have this little delay, it will trigger the airborne end. And when it done, it's done with airborne end, it will uh, go right back to our start. So that is how the system works. Hopefully that's not too uh, difficult to understand or try to figure out. Um, I found that this is probably one of the better ways to do a wall jump system. Um, and I don't know, this is on personal preference, but I left your parameters here that you can adjust that to whatever you like. Okay, you should be set up to where you can parkour to your heart's content. If you have any problems with this tutorial, feel free to hit me up on the Bolt Discord server and I will be happy to give you a hand. For the next video, we're going to be looking at a slide and crouch mechanic so you can get through tight spaces. Hope to see you in the next video.